we have uh, open communion at uh, Messiah. If you have been baptized, you believe that Jesus is Lord, you are welcome to receive communion here. Please let us stand for the brief order of confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us and this world. Amen. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. God and Father of all, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action is needed. In your mercy, O oh God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us for the sake of Jesus our Savior. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away and you are made new. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please, let us share the peace. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy for the peace from above. 
and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all hear their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. How The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be seated. Yeah. 
reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you're unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went and among the peoples through, which, through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. <coughs> Thanks be to God. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord against those who do evil to erase the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from every one. God will keep safe all their bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. O oh Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. <coughs> A reading from the book of Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet. Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. From all of these, Take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation <coughs> and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always preserve in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, 
pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Speak with us, Ben. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Are there any youngsters that would like to come up for a children's message? Come on up. I promise I'm not going to shoot any of you with it. Come on. Good to see all of you today. Yeah. <coughs> you all know what this is? What is it? A bow and arrow. Yes. You know, a lot of people today use this for hunting. Huh? They go bow hunting. But it, a long, long time ago, they used to use it in war. It was a weapon of war. And sometimes, for instance, uh, the people would attack a city, and the people in the city, the soldiers in the city, would, would stand up on the top of the wall of the city, and they would, they would shoot down on the, on the people below. And sometimes they would wrap something around the arrow that would burn, and they would set it on fire, and they would shoot people with that arrow. And it would not only hurt them by you know, going into them with the arrow, but it would also burn them because of the fire. Well, that's, a, that's kind of a horrible thing, isn't it? Yeah, I'm... Kind of glad we don't do that anymore. In fact, this was so horrible that Paul, in, in one of his writings, he used it as something that the devil does. See, he, he shoots us with flaming arrows, he says. And we need something to quench those arrows. And the arrows that Paul is talking about, though, are not physical arrows like these, these but, but they're arrows like, like guilt. The, the devil shoots us with guilt. Or the devil shoots us with things like temptation huh? or things like despair. You know what despair is? Despair is when you have absolutely no hope. That's despair. And sometimes people got fall into that condition. Too, to, and, and Paul says the devil will shoot people with that, with that despair. They have no hope. Huh? Yeah. Or unbelief. Not believing in God. That's one of the arrows that the devil uses too. Yeah. Hey, can I borrow you for a second? Would you stand up? Now, if I were to shoot you with this arrow, huh? All right, I'll stand back a little bit anyway. Now, what would you do? Huh? This is, this is, this is guilt. You did something wrong, and I'm going to make you know it, huh? This is guilt. Now, what are you going to do? 
You going to move? You, you, yeah, okay. Well, what if I turned it over here? Th- then you go back here. And you, you'd try to dodge it, wouldn't you? Yeah. What if, what if this arrow was a machine, or this bow was a machine gun bow, and I could shoot a bunch of arrows all at once? Then which way would you go, huh? And, and, and one of them's going to get you. Oh, it's a hard one, isn't it? Oh, despair time. Yeah. Hey, listen. You know what Paul says to do? Get a shield. Take the shield of faith and put that in front of you. Therefore, it doesn't matter where I shoot from, you have that shield in front of you. Can you, can you sort of put your hand up like you, you go, yeah, yeah. And you know who that shield is? Our faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus is our shield. He protects us from guilt, for instance. He, he takes it upon himself and he forgives us. Right? He, he is our hope. Uh, he is our salvation. He, he is the shield of faith. And, and, and Paul says, take that shield and, and you can quench the arrows. Whatever they look like that the devil shoots at us, whether it's despair or doubt or temptation, in, in fact, Jesus will quench the flaming part of that arrow even as well. Isn't that cool? You know, the neatest part about the shield of faith is it's not heavy. No, no, it's, it, 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 why, it's invisible even. And, and it's already there. You know, in your baptism, you were given that shield, that protection from, Je- with, from Jesus Christ. So just remember, carry Christ with you always in your heart and in your mind. And you will be protected from even the nastiest arrows that the devil can fling at us. Amen. Thank you. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yes. It's great to be with you again. I was here about a month ago. And it's a delight to, to be with you again. And, and I selected as my uh, message today the, um, the from, from the second lesson from Paul's epistle to the uh, Ephesians. And I'm going to start with a story. Of, actually, it comes from uh, pastor and author Leonard Sweet. And he, he tells about the time that he went to the New York Metropolitan Museum of Art. Right? And, he, and he said when he came out of that experience, he, he realized suddenly that he hadn't seen one painting. As a matter of fact, the entire Renaissance wing was not on the agenda of the tour. And he, he figured, well, it, it was because uh, he was not there as a, 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 an art lover. He, he wasn't there as a student. He wasn't even there as a tourist. He was there as the parent of a bunch of squirming children, and they needed to see something awesome. Something big, something super meaningful, and so they went to places like the Egypt, Egyptian exhibit, you know, and saw replicas of the pyramids and big tall uh, statues and stone sarcophagi, you know. But the most impressive part of all was when they went to the armory right, and saw over 15,000 weapons there and, and pieces of armor dating from 400 B.C. Now, all the way to the late Middle Ages. Now, that was awesome. It was awesome armor, right? <laughs> and, and Sweet said that uh, he learned afterwards that in the later Middle Ages, uh, the artisans, the, the metal workers, would make this armor so intricate, so precise, that, and so heavy that it was more suited for parades than it was for actual fighting and war. As a matter of fact, you were doing pretty good if you could just put it on and stand up. Right? And much uh, different it was from the armor that Paul is talking about in our second lesson for today. The, the breastplate of righteousness. The helmet of salvation. Right? The belt of truth. The shield of faith. 
the sword of the Spirit. This, this was lightweight, adequate for protection was this Roman armor, but also good for agility as well. So today I wanted to share with you why, in a spiritual sense, we might need this armor from God. Huh? And the gift and experience that we can have when we do indeed don God's awesome armor. First of all, our need for this armor is a spiritual one. Paul says our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the spirit, the forces of uh, of evil, even in the heavenly places. So this is a spiritual battle. And a fellow by the name of William Sloan Coffin, he once described uh, the spiritual battle, but in, in kind of physical terms, but he talks about how we personify evil, for instance, as like the devil or Satan. And he said, we, we do that and make it a person, not because we can identify any particular person as the devil, but because we experience evil as intensely personal. It, is, it gets inside each of us. Uh, J- writer James Baldwin, he, was, uh, he wrote a book about his uh, growing up years in, uh, in Harlem. He said it took him about five or six years to, to write the book, and he ran out of the advance that the publisher had given him, so he had to go to work you know, to make a living. And he did odd jobs, uh, such as uh, uh, serving as a waiter in some of the restaurants in Greenwich Village. And uh, one day he went into a restaurant, one of those restaurants, to, to get a glass of water. And, he, and, uh, and the waitress said, we don't serve Negroes here. He was black. Now, that's back in the day, w- when even in New York you could do something like that. Huh? But he said it so enraged him. He, 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 he remembered all the snubs and, and insults from all those years of growing up that just welled up inside of him, overwhelmed him, and he took a pitcher of water and threw it at the waitress. And then he ran out of the restaurant. And he said he was in terror, not because of the consequences of his act that he felt would happen, but because of the murderous intent that was in his own heart that was filled with hatred. That's what was bothering him that work of hatred, a murderous intent inside of his own heart. Uh, Baldwin went on to, to live in Paris, France, for, off and on for about 40 years, wrote about 20 books, one of which was How the Devil Finds Work. I'm sure he shared that experience in, in, that, in that work because it, it was working in him. So it's a very personal thing. Secondly, though, uh, the devil is pictured as a sep- having a separate existence from us, Not because he works outside of us, but we experience him as greater than us, more powerful than we are. And people can experience that in things like addiction. You know, anyone who's in a program of recovery, for instance, knows that the first step is to admit that I am powerless over whatever one is addicted to. Or, Or maybe in something like mob mentality, where people will do something with other people that they would never do on their own. There's just something about the power of the group that, 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 that does this. It's more powerful than you are. And then thirdly, uh, Coffin says that uh, we picture the devil as a fallen angel uh, because he doesn't work in our so-called n- lower natures, our physical natures, but it actually in our so-called higher natures, our spiritual nature. As Paul writes, we are uh, battling uh, against spiritual forces of evil. Yeah. Uh, there was a camp uh, in Washington, D.C. I'm sorry, I said Washington State, excuse me, called Camp Quest. I don't even know if it's still operating or not, but... Uh, it was a usual youth camp. You know, it, it had uh, uh, you know, kayaking and swimming and rock climbing. And then, of course, in the evening, there was the campfire and so forth and so on. And, but the one thing that was distinctive about this camp is that it was a camp for atheists and only atheists. And there were uh, two young people at the camp, 9 and 12 years old, and boy and girl. And, and uh, they asked them, well, why are you atheists, first of all? And, and why did you come to this camp? And they said they were atheists because they saw this, this battle, this, this uh, adversarial relationship between science and faith. And they had opted for the science end of it. Yeah. 
And they, and they came to the camp because there was a bunch of other atheists there, and they, they were tired of all the bullying they got at the Christian camp. Right? So if you think of this, this, this battle between science and faith, which is still going on today, right? And it doesn't need to. Right? There, for me, there is no battle between science and faith. It's just two different ways of knowing. You know, there was a lady, a psychologist by the name of Lisa Miller. Uh, she was reflecting on this camp, and she said, you know, our children need spirituality. It is an important part of, of their development. Uh, spirituality, for instance, can help uh, find relief from things like depression. Uh, it's been associated with uh, things like good health, uh, a, a good uh, meaning and purpose in life. And even greater academic achievement has been associated with spirituality. And she said, we are inherently spiritual beings. And the development of that is just as important in our children's lives as is their physical development or their intellectual development or their emotional development. Right? We are spiritual beings. As a matter of fact, uh, Teilhard de... Chase Chardin once said that, that so sometimes people say that we are human beings having a spiritual experience. He turned it around. He said, well, actually, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. Yeah. And that's where the battle is fought. And, and, for all, and for that reason, we do need God's awesome armor to help us, to protect us in this realm as well. And what awesome armor it is. That God gives us. He, he not only gives us this armor to wear, it is the armor that God wears, God's self. In Isaiah 59, verse 17, for instance, the prophet writes, God has put on the breastplate of righteousness. He wears the helmet of salvation on his head. These, these same pieces that, that Paul mentions in the epistle, Isaiah mentions as God wearing them in his writing. So it's God's armor in two senses. One, he gives it to us, but also he wears it himself and uses that armor to protect us. For instance, the, the breastplate of righteousness. What is that? What is righteousness in the Bible? Do you know what righteousness is? It's, it, we sometimes think of that it's, it's the rightness, the good things, the good actions that God demands of us. And that's part of it. But really, at the very bottom, it's what God does for us, fulfilling God's promises to us. That's righteousness in the Bible. When you promise somebody that you'll do something, and then you fulfill that promise, you carry it out, you are righteous in biblical terms. And God promised to save us. He promised to deliver us, to rescue us from sin and death. And God fulfilled that promise in Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, in three times in the book of Acts alone, Jesus is called the righteous one. Not just because he obeyed God perfectly, which he did, but because he was the means by which God carried out God's promise to save us from our sins, and save us from even death itself. That's awesome armor, isn't it? Jesus is God's righteousness. Jesus is God's salvation. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is faithful. This is the armor. As I was sharing with the children, we can carry around with us every day, and it's so light, it's not burdensome at all. In fact, it, it is God's awesome armor right? a couple of uh, summers ago i was at the uh, synod assembly and uh, the assembly's theme was fear and hope and so one of the associates to the bishop was giving a sermon at one of the worship services and she said that her greatest fear is that she is a fraud that what she has been preaching all these years is not only worthless, but it's deceptive because it's a lie. It's not true. And th this, this fear just overcame her that that was real, that, 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 that she was a fraud. 
and pr- afraid. And just imagine living your whole life or preaching your whole life uh, about this, and then at the end of it saying, well, that was kind of worthless or that wasn't true. How, uh, what kind of despair would a person fall into with that, right? Well, after the service was over, I went up to the lady, and I, and I really thanked her for that message because I said to her, I have had the exact same experience. I have felt like a fraud as well, just like you. And I'm glad you shared that experience with me. Now, for me, the way God helped me was whenever I would have that experience, I would remember, yeah, but there's Jesus. With all of my doubts about creation and science and all the rest, there was still Jesus. And I believe Not only that he saved me, but that his way is the way, the truth, and the life. And I just had this conviction. It wasn't something that I did. It was something that God's Spirit was working even more deeply within me. And so I'm thankful that God gave me that protection. Whenever I had these moments of absolute despair that I was a fraud, I'm still preaching today, by the way, you might notice. And so is that young lady uh, who is the associate to the bishop. Right? That's the kind of protection God can give us. And just by asking for it, just in prayer. Paul tells us in our epistle, pray for these things. Right? And put them on. Wear them. All of them. Even the parts of that armor that we might not really want to put on, such as the belt of truth. You know, it was J- President James um, Garfield was attributed with the quote of saying, uh, the truth will set you free, but first it makes you miserable. And Gloria Steinem, she kind of paraphrased that a little bit. She said, the truth will set you free, but first it'll make you mad. And, and isn't that often the truth, isn't it? That before we really understand what the truth means, we get very angry about it, huh? It's hard for us to face it. There was a uh, congressman from Nebraska, William Jennings Bryan, and it was a campaign year, and one of the voters asked him why he was for free silver, and he said, well, the people of Nebraska are for free silver, so I'm for free silver. I'll look up the arguments later. Well, that's all glime and good, you know, people pleasing. I've been in politics, I guess, for a long time, but... uh, But why don't you get to the facts? Why don't we get to the truth about what it means, this free silver thing, or what anything means, and then make decisions based upon our understanding of that truth? Never be afraid to face the truth about ourselves, about our world, about God, because we do so in the presence of a very loving, forgiving, caring, and gracious God. And ultimately, it serves as one of our protections in God's hands. You know, evil can come in many different ways, but God has many weapons, many things to to, to defend us, to protect us against it. In our prayers, let us pray that God covers us with all of these things as we don God's awesome armor. Amen. Our song is A Mighty Fortress is Our God, printed in your bulletin. Mighty fortress is our God.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's compassion and generosity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Wise God, you invite us to set aside immaturity and to live in you. You provide all that we need, shelter, family, friends, clothing, health, and even new life in you each day. Make us bold to reach out in the love you have shown us so that we might share from all we have. Keep us aware of the economic needs and calls for justice within our own community and around the world. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> Creator of all, you call us to keep our tongues from evil and to stop showing disrespect toward people you have made. You require us to depart from evil and do good, seek peace, and pursue it. We pray that through our actions of love, others will be inspired to overcome prejudice, to stop fearing their neighbors, and that all might learn to live together. Give us your guidance, Lord, in your mercy. As the Lighthouse Child and Family Development Center moves from First Baptist to Washington Avenue Baptist, we ask for your guidance and protection. Guide the leaders and teachers of the center and protect them as well as the families and children they serve. Lord, in your mercy. Abiding Lord, bring your healing touch to all who are hurting. We remember especially Katie Brady, Jeff Dykeman, Roy Freeberg, Tiffany Giles, Karen Gullett, Bill Howard, Scotty Inman, Cindy Jones, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Greg Robinson, John Reynolds, Florence Stilwell, Linda Waltz, and Ann Wilbur. Are there others that we should mention? Your spirit gives life today and into eternity. <coughs> Bring your healing spirit into the lives of those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Agnes Mahajla and Wayne Fruley, who, passed, who have passed away recently. Bring your healing spirit to the lives of all those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Everyone has
which is funded somewhat give us a little discussion of Well, uh, we, the prayer shawl ministry is very grateful for extra money for yarn. And it's awesome yarn. Here's my show and tell. Uh, this is spun in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is a good sign. And it is, it is dyed in the great state of North Carolina, which is even better. Uh, <laughs> It's it's uh, it's uh, machine wash and dry, and it's excellent yarn. I invite you to come feel of it. Uh, although some people get a little dizzy when you, the, the scent of yarn. Uh, there's a pile of it down here, and there's a whole shelf of it. There's some in the office, and if you would. Uh, avail yourself of this. What we need now are crocheters and knitters. Thank you. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right in our great joy that we at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, Holy and Father, through Christ our Lord who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our maker, redeemer, and healer. In the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. 
When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal as grains scattered upon the hillside become one bread. So let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son, Jesus. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. coming back. Okay. The body of Christ given for you. 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 blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Please let us stand for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Greater servants go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all people. All I to the real is to the nation. Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray. Wise and generous God, we thank you that at this holy table you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and call others to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, one is that uh, there will be a celebration for Rex and Mary Ann Johnson who are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. That celebration will take place in the Fellowship Hall and in between our worship services. Also, I think Cassie Dimmick, is she here? Yes, and you have uh, some announcements?
Thank you. Are there any other announcements? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 